Hello everybody and welcome back to Bedtime Stories. I'm Miss Amy and I'm going to be tucking you in tonight. Are you ready for bed? Got everything done? Brush your teeth? Get on in. Go to the potty. Get a nice drink of water. Ready to go? Are you all ready to tuck into bed? Stretch up high. Oh, I stretched out a little. Do you like your bed? Is it cozy? Do you have a favorite blanket that you always like to sleep with? I had a favorite blanket when I was little that I liked so much I kept it until I was all grown up and then one of my kids stole it from me and now it's their favorite blanket. But do you have a favorite blanket? A favorite pillow? Favorite snuggly things like bears or other animals or dolls. Well, today, if you've, if you've listened to a lot of my stories or you ever come to my story times when they were at the library, one of my favorite things to do is to celebrate obscure holidays, like f funny days, whatever, whatever the day happens to be. And today I noticed was Multicultural Children's Book Day. Multicultural Children's Book is what I usually do on Mondays with Mundo Monday. Um, <clears throat> but for this one, for a bedtime story, multicultural bedtime story, you mean like the kinds of bed bedtimes you get all over the world? As a matter of fact, we have a brand new book here at the library. It's not even done being covered yet. I stole it from downstairs before they were done covering it. A new, brand new book that is all about the way children go to bed all around the world. It is called My Bed, Enchanting Ways to Fall Asleep All Around the World. It's written by Rebecca Bond, and the pictures are made, and look how carefully how the pictures are made. The pictures are made by Sally Maver, you look at the way she made her picture. She actually made little dolls and she sewed beds for them. You'll have to look look closely when, when you see the close-ups of the pictures. Now this story is written in a nice poem and then below each, each part of the poem it tells you a little bit about the bed that is in the picture. So I, I might read this book twice once slowly to tell you about each of the pictures and the information about each picture, and then once quickly just so you can hear the way the story goes. So this is my bed. Enchanting ways to fall asleep all around the world. My bed rocks on the water. In the Netherlands, that's in Europe, some children live on houseboats in canals or rivers. Like everything else in these children's homes, their beds move gently up and down with the waves. Would you like to fall asleep like that? My bed sways in the breeze. For centuries, sleeping in hammocks has been a tradition in Brazil, Mexico, and other countries of South and Central America. That south, way south where we were, we are. Hammocks provide a comfortable and transportable way of resting, so you could take it to different places, hang them up different places, and in some cases also protect against scorpions and snakes. See, scorpions and snakes aren't going to get up there, are they? Would you like to sleep in a hammock? My bed's beneath a curtain. In warm, humid parts of the world, such as in India, finely woven netting prevents mosquitoes from coming in and biting you, even when one's sleeping with the windows wide open. Do you think that's a good idea? Would you like to get some mosquito netting for the summertime? My beds are loft in trees. 
these beds, they're not quite a loft. They're kind of like bunk beds, but these are traditional homes nestled in the mountains of Norway. That's way up in the north of Europe. Children sleep nestled into beds that are nestled into the walls. Look carefully at those beds. They're part of the walls. These alcove or cubby beds save space, offer privacy, and help keep sleepers warm. Would you like to sleep in a cozy little alcove like that? My bed's a rug of woven wool my father's mother made. Who's your father's mother? Father's mother, that would be your grandmother, right? At night in Afghanistan, that's in the Middle East, many families lay mattresses atop soft, hand-woven rugs, look at that pretty rug, and sleep together in a common room. In the morning, they fold their bedding to the side. So kind of, you pull a sleeping bag out, lay it on the nice soft rug, and then put it away in the morning. Would you like to sleep on that rug? My bed's a mat of river grass that lies beneath tree shade. During the dry season in parts of Ghana, that's in Western Africa, children may prefer to nap outside in the fresh air. Courtyards provide a nice little shelter place to doze on mats or mattresses, which can be brought inside during the night once the temperatures get colder. My bed is made from fired clay and heated from below. In northern parts of the world, such as Russia, very, very cold in the north, winter temperatures can be so cold that many homes have a large stove for cooking and heating. Thick walls of the stove make it safe to touch and a cozy place to sleep. Would you like to go to sleep with a big wood stove underneath you? My bed unrolls on grasslands vast. It travels where I go. See, in the wide open steppes of Mongolia, that's southeast of Russia where we just were, Mongolia people move when the seasons change to find fresh pastures for their horses, sheep, and yaks, just as their ancestors have done for centuries. So he's got he's got a sleeping bag that he unrolls and sleep and rolls back up again every time they move. My bed is in the courtyard, our family's private space. Courtyard all around. Some traditional homes in Iran and other parts of the Middle East are built around a cool, peaceful courtyard. Just a little private yard just for you. High walls offer a quiet, private outdoor place to rest on hot summer nights. My bed is on the rooftop, the coolest sleeping place. In some desert areas of North Africa, including parts of Morocco, scorching summer days give way to cool nights. What better place to catch a dreamy breeze and gaze at the stars than on the roof? Do you like to sleep on the roof and watch the stars all night? My bed is built from sturdy wood. My bed is warm. My bed is good. She's also reading a book before bed, just like we are. Many bed frames in Canada and the United States are made of wood that comes from these countries' forests. Hardwoods like maple, walnut, cherry, oak, and birch make for strong beds that last for many years and can be passed down from generation to generation. My little boy sleeps in his dad's bed, or it used to be his dad's bed, now it's his bed.
Do you sleep in a bed that used to belong to somebody else? My bed's a futon on the floor. There is no bed I could love more. For hundreds of years, people in Japan have slept on mattresses called futons. A futon sits on a floor atop a straw mat called a tatami. In the morning, children roll up their futons and put them in a closet or hang them out a window to keep them fresh. Have you ever slept on a futon mat like that? Can you see me in my bed? I fit so nicely, toe to head. My bed is mine, and me, and right. It's bedtime now for me. What do you think the next word's gonna say? Good night. I go through that again quickly so you can hear all the rhymes. And then we'll say, good night. Enchanting ways to fall asleep. My bed rocks on the water. My bed sways in the breeze. My bed's beneath a curtain. My bed's aloft in trees. My bed's a wub, a rug of woven wool my father's mother made. My bed's a mat of river grass that lies beneath tree shade. My bed is made from fired clay and heated from below. My bed unrolls on grasslands vast. It travels where I go. My bed is in the courtyard, our family's private space. My bed is on the rooftop, the coolest sleeping place. My bed is built from sturdy wood. My bed is warm, my bed is good. My bed's a futon on the floor. There is no bed I could love more. Can you see me in my bed? I fit so nicely, toe, to head. My bed is mine and me and right. It's bedtime now for me. How's it end? Good night. Good night to you as well. I'll see you again next week.